across from Bayfront Park, and it's a gorgeous Saturday afternoon. We'll be interviewing Sara Arroyo, a downtown resident and female powerhouse who has climbed the corporate ladder in the beauty industry and is now Global Marketing Director at American Crew. She's been so gracious to open the doors to her home and just to give us a little bit more about what it's like to live here in Miami. Let's go inside. Cheers. Cheers. I'm here with Sara Arroyo, not only a friend, but a resident of downtown Miami and a marketing professional and whose story I've wanted to tell for some time now. So Sarah, thank you so much for opening your home. No, thank <laughs> you for this great opportunity. So let's start from the beginning. Okay. Tell me about your first year here in Miami and what company you were working with. Oh wow, my first year. So I moved January 8th, 2011. That was almost, what, eight years wow. ago? A long time, time flies. <sighs> Um, I moved in with General Mills. Um, I had received at that point in time an offer to work with them in the Latin American division, okay. managing both Hagen Dazs and Ja Plate, which I don't know if you know the of brand, course. but it's a yogurt brand. Yes. Um, so after be having worked for the Puerto Rican business, I'm Puerto Rican, and also having worked for the U.S. Hispanic, this was really the first opportunity to work with all of the Caribbean markets. That would include the big islands like Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, as well as all of the little islands as well. So that was my first experience here. It was a little bit scary, I have to admit. Had you, had you been before? Yes, okay. twice. Okay. Um, more for the party scene, I have right. to say, okay. maybe those type of weekend visits, yeah. two hour and a half, right. no, two and a half hours from Puerto Rico, I would come, be a weekend, right. party a little bit, <laughs> uh, but nothing, you know, Real life. more than three yeah. days, and that had been just two times in my life, um, but I knew that, you know, Puerto Rico, after a while, it starts getting small on you you know it's right. a beautiful island great people but you know from a professional standpoint the career opportunities are highly limited right. so i definitely said why don't i give myself an opportunity to test the waters outside of puerto rico mm -hmm. and i loved miami because miami was close to home mm -hmm. you know it's a inexpensive trip to make two hours and a half yeah and it's warm all year, which for me, yeah. coming from an island, you can imagine that it can be cold in yeah. the winter, it can be quite difficult Absolutely. if you're not used to that. And also the Latin culture was something that definitely drew me in mm -hmm. um, because I'm Latina, you know, and oh, you after you're a Latina, are, I yes. am. <laughs> and Latinas, we have this, you know, thing about us that it's sometimes quite hard to find in other places. Exactly, yeah. to find in other places than, than Miami. So definitely I just had to take that professional opportunity with General Mills at that point in time. So you, how did you find the, your first home when you were looking in Miami? Oh, that, so yes. You know, did you have someone Ooh. here that you could call? And I did. Um, it's at first it ends up being kind of you know your friends put you in contact with people and one of my really good friends she had a cousin who was a realtor here down in Miami so she really took care of me um, I had to fly in from Puerto Rico for a weekend and I during my visit possibly saw about five to six apartments okay. from what I've heard Brickle was a place right so all the young people would keep telling me that i had to move yeah. to brickle mm -hmm. so that was like okay perfect so i'll do brickle that's if it, it was a pretty consistent advice so Across the board. exactly yeah. everyone said brickle so i said okay perfect i want brickle <laughs> and um she took me to see a few apartments and i saw one in brickle key and that's actually where I moved. It was furnished. Okay. So that definitely was a pro that helped a lot. Why? Because I didn't have to go through that, you know, financial hassle of right. trying to figure out and start buying furniture. I wanted it to take step by step. So I moved into Brickle Key in my first kind of like own paid apartment right. that was furnished. And it was just absolutely the area of Brickle Key was absolutely stunning. Oh, no, that's great. Yes. And, and, and that was in 2011. Correct. So yes. Brickle now, 
oh. you can't even recognize. I City can't center. Even. Incredible. Correct. Correct. Yes. So, so tell me about, you know, in, in certain industries, there are milestones for, you know, the ultimate success. So in marketing, just tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, how, how that is. Marketing, you know, you usually start from a marketing coordinator or an assistant brand manager position. Okay. okay. In my experience, I was very lucky that when I was in third year of college, both, I was work, studying, I'm sorry, studying full time. I was offered a position in Procter & Gamble. Okay? okay, it wasn't I offered, of course, I had to go through all the tests. It's a very competitive Rigorous. company to get into. So it wasn't like I was offered. I really had to do almost an SAT. Wow. I, I, it's not an SAT, wow. but it's an actual written test that you right. have to take to go through. Um, I was very lucky because I was able to get that opportunity to work full time, sorry, wor uh, work part time mm -hmm. and study full time, wow. okay, in my third year of college while I was studying Sorry, marketing and finance. Early, early. So I started very, very early in my career, which it can be, I would say, possibly one of my advice to the young people out yeah. there is start as early as you can because it's very, very competitive, right? So um, I started with them when I was 21 years old and that just opened an amount of learning experiences for me, not only, I would say in all different aspects of marketing. So I started with them, I did a little bit of like short-term assignments in different type of departments. I did shopper marketing at some point. I did, you know, customer marketing at some point, brand management, a little bit of everything. That's important. Very important. That's the all aspect. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, after that, um, after I would say two years mm -hmm. of working with them as an what I would call intern student co-op, which was more like a long-term internship, not only the summer internship that you usually get. Um, I started with them full-time as an assistant brand manager working for Bounty, the paper towels, as well as Pampers. <laughs> oh, wow. Pampers is such a beautiful brand. Um, after that, I was with them for like two years, moved here to Miami with General Mills. Oh, so that's wow. actually when I came to Miami. After working with General Mills for a few months as a um, associate brand manager, it you know it's a great company, very well company, great products. But you know after having had an experience with PNG, it was just total culture right. shock for me, and I was too young to be right. able to deal with that because after, in Procter and Gamble they really do give you the autonomy completely to. Um, be o have ownership That's of your right. own products. Right. Your, correct. Your exactly. Correct. So I had to speak to a few people and try to get back to Procter and Gamble, which just the stars fully aligned with a great position wow. here in Procter and Gamble, managing Latin America. So I, after six months, I returned. I know it's kind of that thing that you're like, how do I put in my resume that, and how do I explain that? But. <laughs> That was like I called a six months break in General Mills right. and then back to PNG. Um, and in PNG, I manage fragrances okay. um, as an also as an assistant brand manager um, for Dolce Gabbana, Gucci, and Escada perfumes. We so know well, exactly. Yeah. So that was my first experience, really moving to a Caribbean markets, Puerto Rico type of role or, or geography um, coverage to really manage Latin America as a region, which is you, you can manage it from a regional perspective, but it's also so different within, right? right. Colombia is a whole different country as yeah. from Brazil, for I example. Imagine. Exactly. So I did on um, Latin America with Procter & Gamble Prestige, which were prestige fragrances for about another two years. And that's actually when I was announced that Revlon, um, the cosmetics brand, was moving their Latin American headquarters from Venezuela to Miami. Wow. Was there was a press release that one day you're leaving? It's always I mean, friends. No. Okay. It's always friends. Okay. Honestly, like if there's another advice that I can give any marketing person out there that wants to continue developing the career, mm -hmm. keep your network active. That's okay, keep yourself out there because it's always your network who's going to offer that next opportunity. Position. 
great. Correct. So I started with Revlon. That's where I've been the last six years of my life. And I started um, as an associate brand manager. And from there, working for Latin American distributors, I went from associate brand manager to brand manager to marketing manager, always with those markets in Latin America that were managed via distributors, which is a completely different model to actually having an affiliate or local offices, okay. right? So after that, um, about two years ago, I started, I was offered the position of Latin America Marketing Director. So that was pretty exciting wow. when you get that, you're like, news. oh my God, I'm gonna, yeah, exactly. You're like, Huge. am I gonna be a director? Dude, that's, <laughs> wow. it, was, it really blew my mind. Um, and after that, since April, I've been with American Crew, so this was my. This is actually my first global role wow. um, as an American Crew global marketing director. And we'll get into American Crew, but you touched up on three great points that I'm okay. going to dive into. So travel, I know that's a big aspect of your career. Yes. So and you've named Colombia, yes. you know the Caribbean. Uh, explain a little bit about how you balance that schedule that Ooh. travel <laughs> schedule and you know how that has influenced you with with work and what you yeah. what you're doing yeah. so, so travel <laughs> it's one of those i would say things in your work that can be a curse but it can also be a blessing at the same time so i'll start with the curse part it's never as glamorous as it sounds right because when you have to travel for work it's very different you really go in and have full-on meetings mm -hmm. right so it's it's tough it takes you out of the routine you know right. I have to leave my dogs my hubs, husband does <laughs> double shifts oh, walking the God. dogs yeah. you know he's like fifth day <laughs> when are you coming home so it's right. terrible in that sense you mm -hmm. Don't work out as much, don't eat as well, things like that. But then it's a blessing because it opens your life to so many different cultural experiences. Absolutely. And not only experiences, but also meeting so many different people, right? So um, how do I balance it? I try to be choiceful in the okay. trips that I make. Okay. You know, so, um, I think the company Revlon and any company goes through ups and downs in terms of financials um so it, sometimes they make you travel more and they have the tne the yeah. travel and expenses to pay for that right. sometimes they you know they yeah. hold you up a little bit but i would say there's really not a lot of balancing right. in traveling it's just you know embrace every traveling experience you have for work i, I mean and thankfully downtown miami you're so close to the airport so I'm correct sure that correct. Helps. correct oh that helps plus i'm always late <laughs> which I shouldn't, but I'm always late. So having, you know, living in downtown Miami, I have the airport, I would say 15 minutes without traffic. So it's very, very easy to um, get to the airport as well as there's just Ubers right, everywhere. Right there. So we talked about your professional life. Yes. Now, you, we can both attest that living in South Florida, Miami, it's just amazing. You wake up every day. We often say, have you seen this day? So yes. explain the perfect weekend. Like, what's your perfect weekend? Oh, wow. It'll definitely, definitely involve kite surfing, right? <laughs> so that's something that my husband and I got into about, I would say, two years ago. Right now, of course, we live in downtown. We're very close to Key Biscayne. That's, I would say, our main spot to do okay. kite surfing. There's so many different kite surfing schools. So we'll possibly go 10 in the morning, depending on the wind. I know it's so much fun. Totally wow. recommended for anyone. Um, it requires persistence, but once you get there, you'll never feel so much freedom. Wow. right doing something so it'll involve possibly four hours of kite surfing it's such an amazing experience um it'll definitely involve a lot of dog walking so i have two dogs both are rescued of course and clearly we have a beautiful bayfront park it's our little piece of nature within downtown so we'll always spend i would say we always walk them half an hour in the morning half an hour in the afternoon if we can on a saturday we'll get them that little you know cherry on the top sure. of extra 10 minutes 
but we'll, you know, it's kind of our way to also decompress, decompress from the week. Right. So definitely a lot of dog walking and my husband and I will, you know, have our little dates here and there. You know, we'll go to the cinema. Um, they opened a new Silver Spot Cinema just right two downtown. blocks away. Yeah, Correct. I haven't been yet. How is it? Oh, so nice. Oh. So nice. Very nice. Very premium. Since even, you know, your first step in is just a very nice experience. Small kind of boutique type cinema. Perfect for a date. Yeah. Perfect for a date. We'll go walking. Maybe we'll have dinner at Meraki. It's a Greek, Greek place or Ceviche 105, just a few blocks away as well. So very so walkable. Very walkable. Which is really nice. Very walkable. And it's honestly one of the things that I treasure most about this area. I basically don't need to take the car anywhere. I can walk. Actually, didn't you eliminate your car? You don't have a Correct. car. Cor Correct. Correct. I mean, we went Shared from car. two cars originally to now one car. I still need it for work because they moved work a little bit farther away. But when I'm not in work, I can walk everywhere to the bank, to the pharmacy, to the shopping mall, to the theater, everywhere. So it's just amazing. So talking about Bayfront Park, which is your jewel here, uh, recently I was on social media and I saw you were you were speaking to the city commissioners oh, about yeah. a very controversial topic, Ultra, extending yes. the, the uh, contract, the 10-year contract. Correct. So um, and I know that you're, you're very invested in downtown here. So how was that experience? And what do you think, what other, um, you know, issues or topics or hot topics right now yeah. in the city? Whew. So that's a, an experience that I have very close to my heart because being a downtown neighbor, um, it's very tough to live through Ultra. And it's a very polarizing topic because we get a lot of people saying, it's only three days, you know? Why can't you just suck it up and right. listen to the music and it's just three days that brings so much money to the economy? Honestly, it's not three days, it's almost four months, right? Of just pure construction. It's just too difficult for people to live here that live here to be able to deal with that. And it's just about our quality of life, right? So that's something that my husband and I got involved with, you know, after experiencing our first two ultras, it was very, very tough. And point very one important point i've gone to ultra so i'm pretty open-minded about <laughs> that okay because i can tell it's very fun yeah. and magical is just a very yeah, different here. downtown to what it was when ultra started about i think it was like what 20 25 yeah. years ago we have so many different neighbors now hundreds of thousands it wasn't just sustainable to have ultra happening in our backyards so that's something that you know i took a day off went to the to the city hall there in Coral Gables to speak to our Miami commissioners and really explain to them all the the struggles that we have to deal with not only for 3 days but actually for 4 months the pre the pre stage during those 3 right. days and after like right. basically the 3 months that Bayfront Park is just absolutely ruined mm -hmm. from 3 days of partying so I would say that's the first one. We that's something that we won as neighbors very recently. About, I'm so happy. It's just changed my future here in downtown. I have to admit, I would say that the homeless situation um, could improve. Mm -hmm. Okay, it has improved. Um, I think we have good security. We have good neighbors that are highly involved with that cause. And I have to admit that some of the homeless people have really become part of the community right That's so right. Yeah. we have um, exactly they're humans they've gone through their life struggles mm -hmm. um we have one great guy in the park we love him his name is austin he always gives water to stella oh. and so who are my dogs he actually spoke at the city hall wow, when really? we went to the yeah and he was you know he said everyone here here lives close to the park i live well, in the right park now. exactly so yeah. he's part of us but it's definitely, you know, looking beyond something that we need to figure out what to do mm -hmm. and give these, you know, people that are struggling yeah, in life absolutely. more resources to really help them rebuild their lives. I would say it's probably the second hot topic after Ultra yes. that we're dealing with as neighbors. And quickly, you know, how does someone get more involved? Like, how did you find out or what, what's your suggestions for um, residents? I would say that 
there's I would say two resources. Number one is the Miami Downtown Neighbors Alliance. Okay. Right. So they have a really great community group of people. Okay, that watch for the interests of our downtown neighbors. Um, it's 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 so amazing how much information they give us of the different activities that are happening here mm -hmm. in downtown Miami, as well as really like bring issues and hear our concerns and help us advocate right politically right. Yes. for our concerns so that's a group i got involved with through ultra and it, it's just like they're my voice in a way um i would say the second one is my building so the our committee or our trust our board mm -hmm. that's the right word our board is highly involved with the community that's beyond great. 50 bus game so i'm able to really benefit Be because informed. I am always, they just do such a great job informing us of absolutely everything, the good and the bad. That's great. And, you know, talking about 50 Biscayne and we're here in your home, congratulations. You, you became Thank a homeowner you. not too long. Well, how long has it been? It's, it's been two, three years. Oh, three years, two fine. weeks ago. So, you know, I know you, you have your license, yes. so you have a good perspective on the home buying process. Yes. You know, uh, tell us a little bit about how it was for you if, when you're on the flip side. <laughs> so it's quite um, scary at first, right? It's quite scary. Um, in my personal situation, I was my own realtor throughout the process mm -hmm. so I was able to kind of guide myself which is what it might have been a little bit more scarier right. because that's not what I do on a full-time basis yeah. but definitely I would say that having a person a realtor mm -hmm. to really support you and inform you and educate you throughout the process it's the number one thing to do okay and I'm a glad lot. that you say that because yeah. a lot of people feel that they can do it on their own they can't and your they wouldn't even know as a homeowner and a licensed agent is have Get, an agent. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Have an agent. Mm -hmm. Either if you're selling or you're buying, but if you're buying even more, have an agent. You don't have to pay anything. There's not a fee mm -hmm. for a buyer, and you're going to be so much better informed throughout the process of buying your home because being your first home, it can get quite scary, and there's a lot of decisions, you know, both financially right. and also legally legal decisions yeah. that you have to make throughout the process. Uh, so, you know, Sarah, this is was very important to me because I've known you for so long and yes. I've always felt like people need to hear your story, you know, you, you see a little bit of your life, but, you know, I want to touch up on something that has affected you in your life that you feel has really shaped you as a person. I have to go for that experience that really took me from being a girl to being someone more mature mm -hmm. and with more perspective, which was my dad's illness. Um, my dad, when I was 18 years old, I was just actually in Cancun in my, you know, that um, college, you're going yeah. to college kind of week trip. And I got told that my dad was diagnosed with ALS. Um, which is amyotrophic lateral scler sclerosis. A lot of people know about it through the Ice Bucket Challenge. Which has been brought light to it. Correct, yeah, correct. Right. And it was just the toughest thing I've ever had to live. You know, I saw him breaking down as a human being, his ab ability to move, to speak, um, just, just simple movements that we take for granted on a daily basis. And also how my family for five years just broke down. You know, the medical cost that that comes, uh, that that brings to your life, um, the just the financial struggles, the emotional and psychological stru struggles, it really just impacts you for life. And I never, you know, I it's there was also always one question that I would make myself every day, which was why, right? Why? And I remember one friend who told me once, you know what, Sarah, you won't understand why until this has ended, right? And one day it did, because of course, ALS, is, it doesn't have a cure. Um, and after it did, I was just completely different, right? I have today so much more perspective about life, about what really matters and the things that don't matter, about not drowning myself in three drops of water. 
Sure. And I think that's possibly the most important thing. Um, get perspective about life. Yeah. You know, there, there's everyday struggles every day. Every day yeah. we go through things. Just look at the sky. It's such a beautiful day. That's why I sometimes tell my husband, it's such a beautiful yeah. day, you know, just enjoy, enjoy it. it, you know, because today we're here and tomorrow we're not, right? So yeah. I think in my case, tragedy had my life very young. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's a life lesson that I just took and that has benefited me. Although I would love to have him here with me every day of my life. I wish I would have my dad with me. But it's just changed my perspective and made me live such a better life. And and he's definitely through you because you're yeah. doing so well and Thank activating. You. Thank you so much. And I think you picked the perfect place to enjoy those days. Yes. And you're in Miami. Yes, correct. That's so true. That's so true. Thank you. Yes. <laughs>